All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen to lesson four in our study of logarithms and exponential functions. We're going to continue our study of logarithms and one of the biggest sections of logarithms is learning their properties. All right, so we're going to have three properties that we're going to focus on today. You are going to get a handout if you have not gotten one already on all of the properties. We're going to really focus on three of them, however. So these are the three properties that we have. We have the product rule, the quotient rule, or rather I should say property, and the power property. The product property says that if I have the log with any base of a product of two things, I can write it as the sum of two logarithms. So in an example, would look something like this if I was to take the log base 4 of 4x I could write that as this is the product of 4 times x I can write it as log base 4 of 4 plus the log base 4 of x now this is handy for us in solving equations, which we're coming up to in a little bit, and also evaluating logarithms by hand without a calculator. Likewise, with this property, you can go in the other direction. If I have the log base 3 of 4 plus the log base 3 of y, I have the sum of two logarithms with the same base means I can take the log base 3 of the product of the two things in each logarithm. So we have the log base 3 of 4y. All right, so these properties work in both directions because equality is transitive. We can go in either direction. The quotient property says if I have the log of a fraction or a quotient, we can write it as the difference of two logarithms. So in this sense, if I had log base 5 of 6 over 5, I could write this as log base 5 of 6 minus the log base 5 of 5. And likewise, we could go in the opposite direction if I have the difference of two logarithms. So if we had the log base 3 of x minus the log base 3 of y, I could write this as the log base 3 of the first one, since it's subtraction over why? Now, you do have to remember they have to be the same bases. You cannot have log base 3 and log base 2. You cannot do that as the same uh, in one logarithm. And lastly, the power property says that if I have a exponent on top of the thing in the logarithm, I can bring that exponent out to the front. So I can say if I have the log base 2 of x to the third power, I could write this as the exponent is 3. I could write this as 3 times the logarithm base 2 of x. And again, because equality is transitive in these properties, we could also say if I had 2 log base 10 of y, I could write this as log base 10 of y squared. That number in the front can become an exponent. All right, so those are the properties. Let's look at some of the complicated questions that we're going to be looking at, or the more complex questions that we're going to be looking at in this particular assignment. So we're going to expand logarithms. Now, expanding logarithms means use all three of those properties wherever necessary to expand it as far as we possibly can. So if we had something like log base 10, we're just going to leave base 10, of x cubed 
times y to the fifth. Well, I have to, before I can do the exponents because the exponents are different, I have to think about this as the product. So we can look at the product rule and rewrite this as log of x cubed plus log of y to the fifth. And now we have exponents that we can take care of using the power rule. So this would be 3 log of x plus 5 log of y. And that is fully expanded. There's no more properties that we can use to expand this any farther. Let's try a different one here. If we were to expand log of x root 7 over t squared. All right, so we want to try to, before we do any exponents, we need to expand using our other properties. So we're going to use right here, this is division, so it's a quotient. So we're going to use the quotient rule or property. So we get log x root 7, oops, not x, x root 7 minus log of t squared. On the left logarithm, we have a product right now. So we're going to say this is log of x plus log of root 7 minus, here we can use our, prop, or our power property. We can bring the 2 to the front. And this kind of looks like it's done. However, we have a simple property that you may or may not have remembered. The square root of 7 is really 7 to the power of one half. Square roots are the same thing as the exponent of one half, which means instead of having the square root of seven, I could rewrite that as seven to the one half power, which means I can use the power property once again to get this fully expanded to its final form. I can bring the half to the front I can say it's log of 7 minus 2 log of t. Now we have it fully expanded. So you do want to remember this property saying that the square root is the 1 half exponent. All right, what else are we going to do with this? We are going to write as a single logarithm. So we need to go in the opposite direction. So let's say we had this. Let's say we had 2 log base 2 of m minus 4 log base 2 of n, and we want to rewrite this as a single logarithm, which means we have to use our properties in the other direction. So recall that the last thing we did was the power property in the expansion, so that's the first thing we want to take care of in the compression of the logarithms. So we're going to take care of this 2. We're going to put that as an exponent on the m. So we get m squared minus, we're going to put this 4 as an exponent on the n. And then you see we have the same base logarithm on subtraction, which means we can use the quotient property. And it's the first one, which is m squared, divided by the second one, which is n to the fourth. All right, so we use the quotient property first to put them up as exponents. And then we use the, or I'm sorry, we use the power property to put the exponents up on top. And we use the quotient property to get rid of the subtraction and write as a single logarithm. Let's try one more before we finish the last one here. And we're going to look at 3 log base 2 of 2 minus log, oops, that's not the problem we want to do because that's our next problem. We're going to look at log base 2 of 9 plus log base 2 of 3 minus log base 2 of, uh, let's go 2. 
All right, so we have multiple things that we have to take care of here. So let's first take care of the plus. They're all the same logarithm. The sum means it's going to be the product. So we can say this is log base 2 of 3 times 9 minus log base 2 of 2. And then since we have the difference or the subtraction, we need to write this as a quotient. So 3 times 9 is 27 over the 2, and we have our final single logarithm. All right, the last thing we're going to be doing here with these properties is evaluating a logarithm. So we're going to be looking at figuring out what the actual answer is. So we're going to look at 3 log base 2 of 2 minus log base 2 of 4. So let's use our power property first. We can say this is log base 2 of 2 to the third minus log base 2 of 4. And since we have a subtraction, we can use our quotient rule. Now we're going to say something like this. We're going to say log base 2 of 2 to the third is 8 divided by log base 2 of 4, or no, sorry, not log base 2, but divided by the 4 piece. Now, that's one logarithm. However, we want to actually evaluate this log. So we're going to say log base 2, 8 divided by 4 is 2. And if you recall from the last lesson, we say that log base 2 of 2 is equal to something. Now, we don't like question marks necessarily. Let's use an x. And we say 2 to the x is equal to 2. Well, the x has to be 1. That means this has to be 1. So the answer here is 1 because 2 to the first power is 2. So we're going to be using a little bit what we did in the last lesson, looking at evaluating logarithms by hand using our properties as we move forward. All right, that is going to finish us off for today. As always, I will leave you with something funny, I guess, and I will see you guys later.